Hey guys, it is Wednesday, so we're going to talk for just a few minutes today, and it's going to be kind of a truncated thing. It's kind of a transition thing. This is a text I want to talk to you about today. In the grand scheme of things, um, I want to talk to you about it a few weeks ago. I got excited about Isaiah, forgot about it. So now I want to backtrack before we continue on with Isaiah, and I forget about it again, and uh, kind of draw it out. We're talking about this um, overarching theme about who God is and what uh, God shows us about his character, particularly through uh, this theme that we see clearly developed in the book of Exodus where um, the I am, the God who is present, the name that he gives Moses at the burning bush, is expressed through his presence and as the God who is present he hears the cry coming out of the darkness and he answers that cry. Uh, again and again in scripture we see that this is the nature of God, the one who hears the cry coming out of the darkness. He answers that cry, usually going to, in the biblical way of talking about things, going to war with the powers that be um, over the darkness of the world. And he brings uh, victory and liberation out of those moments. And so we've been talking about that for some time now, kind of just making a case, spelling it out. Um, it's present in the Exodus narrative. It is present in uh, the story of Cain and Abel, where Abel's blood cries from the ground and God God hears and he acts for justice. It is present in um, Jesus, Jesus' life in the gospel narratives. It's present in Revelation. I want to show you one more place today where this sort of theme kind of works its way out. And then we'll be back into um, Isaiah. And I'll give you a review of Isaiah next time uh, to kind of catch you back up where that is because Isaiah is telling these sorts of stories where God responds in this sort of way. Uh, but the text I want you to look at just for a few minutes today, and this one really is going to be kind of short, uh, like I said, just kind of a transition. I was going to tag it on to the end of a lesson a few weeks ago, and I forgot about it, but it is important, so I want you to um, I want you to pay attention to it. Is is Romans 8. Of course, Romans 8 is this great chapter um, where uh, we are not condemned because we are in Christ, and talks about being led by the Spirit and things like that. But one of the things that I want you to notice as we go through Romans 8, and I'm only going to kind of highlight certain parts of this text, um, is that throughout this text, even though, um, even though this is this grand positive text, there's this undercurrent of hardship, this undercurrent of trial, of things going wrong, of things being difficult. And one of the things that you see coming out of this is that throughout the text everyone is groaning everyone is crying out and so for instance um, Paul will say by the way just pick up on the Exodus themes that kind of run throughout verse 15 you've not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again but you've received the spirit uh, capital S there in my translation indicating that with the spirit of God you uh, received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out Abba Father and um, you know that that transition from slavery to adoption, from slavery to family. Uh, it's very similar to the Exodus motifs we've been looking at. Um, but look at what Paul says in verse 18 as we scroll down to that. He says, For I consider that the sufferings of the present are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us. Um, he's focusing on the glory that is about to be revealed to us, but he acknowledges the suffering of the present. And it's going to come back in a big way here in a few minutes in a text that we're familiar with. But as he goes on down through there, he says the suffering of the present also causes creation to groan. Um, God created all of creation. He made creation to be very good. Sin broke all of creation. It's not just this thing that um, exists between me and God has these uh, long-lasting cosmic effects. And um, so creation in Romans 8 groans because of the brokenness, because of the rule of sin and death in the world. Give me just a second while I take a drink. My Coke is a little frozen. If I don't drink it every now and then, it's going to overflow. Um, <clears throat> but creation groans creation cries out it is living in anticipation of uh, what God is going to do in the final chapter through Jesus Christ and then he goes down and he says that not only is creation groaning along with us 
uh, not only are we groaning, this, this present suffering that he's talking about, but also the Spirit. In verse 26, in a text that we're familiar with, the Spirit groans with us as well. So he says in verse 26, Likewise also the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with us with unexpressed groanings. The same sort of language that has been applied to us and has been applied to creation throughout. The Spirit is growing with us. And this is super important. Um, because what is at stake here? I mean, kind of what's going on here is oftentimes in the suffering and the hardship of the world, one of the questions we ask is, where is God in the midst of all of this? Where is God in the middle of all of this that is going on in our present suffering, that sort of thing? Is God kind of only concerned with the end? Uh, why doesn't God do more? And Paul says in the middle of all of the hardship, uh, the God who is present, the God who hears, is first off actually present and he is concerned to the extent that his spirit groans along with us in our suffering. And then, of course, as the text goes along, um, we see that God doesn't just groan, but he uh, comes into the situation through Christ. He works in the situation, verse 20, all things work together to those, according to God's will, who love him, called according to his purpose. He, he acts in the situation, and he brings victory out of that situation and so we have that text at the end of Romans 8 where you know if God is for us who can stand against us this is an exodus story this is an exodus text this is God telling us something about himself that in the middle of all of the mess the mess that by the way will not compare to the glory that is coming but in the middle of all of the mess what we have to deal with right now um, we are groaning creation is groaning. God's spirit is in the middle of that groaning with us, but he is present and he is attentive and he is acting and he will ultimately be victorious. And so one of the major themes of Romans 8 is hope. You know, where do we ground our hope? Where do we find our source of hope? And Romans 8 would say it is precisely in the God who hears your cry, who groans along with you in the darkness, who is uh, tuned in to it and attentive to it and sympathetic to it is in the God who hearing that cry is going to act and who will ultimately be, be victorious because nothing, Paul concludes by saying, uh, that has been created or will be created, uh, nothing in the breadth or the depth or the width or the height of uh, creation can take us away from the love of God. Okay, so like I said, just a short one this week. Uh, to kind of catch us back up to speed. I'd forgotten about that. Just a reminder, we don't record these live. I think that's probably obvious. This is not my house. But I'll post this as soon as I get home uh, on Wednesday night. And if you have questions, comments, anything like that, uh, just let me know and we'll talk about it. Hope you guys have a great week. We will talk to, to you later.